Hey guys, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Today we cover four questions. First question comes from Michael and he's basically asking, hey Daniel, I have problems with working workflow on the SSD with my project, going back and forward to my Mac and then back there. So I will explain a little bit in this one. The second question comes from finding the Huggy and basically he is asking, he is using LumaFusion to create XML files, which is Final Cut Pro XML files. I will show you how this works. He couldn't find out how to import that to DaVinci Resolve. I will you that today and then the third question comes from Saige Giga Factory on my German channel because I make the videos for DaVinci Resolve in German and in English every day and basically his question was around the topic of how to speak in front of a camera how to script this better and storytelling and all those kind of things that will answer a little bit in this video today and the last question actually came from my girlfriend <laughs> and she was asking hey how can I do fast black and white in DaVinci Resolve because she started using DaVinci Resolve for her channel as well which is amazing okay let's start with the first question. To answer the first question, which is all about how you can set up everything properly on the SSD. So he was writing that it was easier to use Blackmagic Cloud, which I agree, it's sometimes super easy. But for example, in our masterclass for DaVinci Resolve, we go through the whole process of how you set up everything from the cache files, from your project files onto the SSD. So you have to understand one major concept so that you understand it is everything that DaVinci is saving onto the local stuff, you have have to save it to your SSD. Also, all of your files have to be on the SSD. And so the most important that you have to cover is when you come here to DaVinci Resolve and you open the project manager, you can open here on the left your libraries. And the first one you have to do is you have to create a complete new library on your SSD library. It works here with add new library and just create one on the SSD. And this is the library that you can then also access from your Mac. It's actually that simple. The very first time you just add the library, if it's already created, you can also go here in and say connect, and then you go to the folder where that library is. This is step number one. But then the next step that you have to take encounter is the presets. What am I talking about? If you sometimes have presets that have to do something with cache files, for example, if I go here in to my presets with my settings and here under general options, I have my render cache. And at the moment that's sitting on my local drive. So I can also browse that and change it to my SSD. But now here comes the kicker. Every time you change this, this will only be changed for that one project. If you start a new project, it will start with the preset. So you have to then come up here and make it a preset. So save as current preset and then make it as set as current settings default preset. I think you understand what I mean. So definitely if you don't know this com completely, this is one of the amount advantage of the Va Da Vinci Masterclass because we go through all of those steps so you can properly work from that. So second question, how can I import the XML files that you can create in LumaFusion. So in LumaFusion, if you have a project and you go to export, you can have here, it costs app separate, so you have to buy for that. But if you have it, you can make a final cut XML file. And I show you now here in DaVinci how this works. You don't go in here into the project manager because sometimes you say like import project, but it doesn't work that way. You have to come in here and open the edit page. It doesn't work on the cut page. You have to open the edit page. If you don't know how to open the edit page, I made a video here on this channel how you can open all of those pages. So definitely watch that one first. When you have the edit page, now you go here, right click in the media, and then you say right click. And now comes the thing not import media from XML because that is just a basic XML. We need Final Cut Pro XML. So in we, how do we do this? We go here to timeline and we say import. And then here under this XML is on the, also the Final Cut Pro. So I already created this XML file, this one. Oh yeah, if you already did this on your iPad and you created a file with LumaFusion, the first file it creates is actually a zip file. So in that case, you have to first go to your file manager and open this one, just double tap, and it will create this folder here. And now you can open this file in DaVinci Resolve. So now I can come in here and open this file. So it will ask me now the, the settings. If you know your settings, you can even play around. I keep them now as it is. It is 24, 1920, yeah, Final Cut Pro, yeah, mixed frame rate, yeah, okay, I, I think that's fine. Okay, so now here comes the thing. Da Vinci doesn't know where the file is. So you have to tell him, okay, I don't wanna search for a new file. I just say no here, that's fine. But I get my cuts 
This is the most important. All the project settings that you did with the cuts and everything is now coming from Luma Fusion to DaVinci. So I have my cuts here, but my file is missing. And now you maybe recognize, oh wait, I cannot relink media. Why? Because the media is not even here in the folder. But it's actually that simple. I just go in and say import media. Uh, not input media, this was on my photos. So you have to go where your media is. In my case, it was now here on the photos and it was this video that I used for this test. So I open this one and if I have all of the files that I needed and now loaded into DaVinci, you will see automatically that it already adjusted that. So maybe some people are now watching like why, why does it even make sense? The reason why you do something like that is because now we don't have just video clips, we actually have the information of the whole video. So you give the cuts and then import it to DaVinci Resolve. So the next question is an interesting question. So how can you tell better stories? And I had to smile because um, this is a deep topic. I mean, it's all about rhetoric, being on camera, and I wanna make it as simple as possible. Number one is execution. You just have to train and, and do it and do it and do it. And one way that I like to do it is I don't like to script every detail because then it feels like I'm just reading and I'm a news mag man and I'm yeah reading the news to you. So it, it doesn't feel natural, right? You wouldn't talk like this to a friend. So the way that I try, because I, what I believe is that we all are storytellers. Some improved more, some less, but we all are storytellers. If you go to your friend and you tell a story about, hey man, today I was at McDonald's and I didn't get a burger, I just got a salad. What? Really? Yes. How can they? I don't know. I think they have a week like the, the healthy week and they, they just, just swapped the burger and now I'm healthy. I don't like that. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Anyway, the point is that I'm trying to make is we are already storytellers and we can improve this craft. So the best tip that I actually have is besides of like, of course, doing it all over again and like just practicing. If you have a script, try to practice it so it's more natural that it's your voice and not the reader's voice and today we have the news and you know it, it just feels different if I not have a script and basically talk to you and explain that from my head and if you're really into that like um, and renewable energies and Tesla you probably love that topic anyway and you just make the script so you're more shorter in time so you can learn over time to to still follow the script but maybe go off a little bit by just hey guys I had this Tesla in my hands and, oh yeah, and this brings me to another point, what I just did. Sometimes, and this is what I'm reading here, you are asking me like, how can you improve your script? But I think your script is probably on point and I wanna give you one uh, YouTube channel that I'm watching right now, a lot, I love this channel, Real Life Lore. In this channel, he makes maybe a little bit jokes, but it's a lot of facts and like 20, 30 minute videos about all kind of different things. Like why is Wyoming bigger, uh, lower in population than Colorado? And why is uh, Australia a desert? Like super interesting topics and a lot of facts. I give you this as an example. You can look at how he does it because it's also facts and you can use this, uh, how he does it. But the way, and this is another tip, Many times it's not really the value that we give that makes a presentation a presentation. I could talk and make a talk interesting even if I just talk about the salad in McDonald's. You know what I mean? It's the way I talk about this. Hey, today I, I was at McDonald's, you know, I wanna tell you this story. And it was, it was disgusting. And uh, you can already tell like, I'm overdoing this, of course, and you probably not make videos like this, but what I'm trying to say is sometimes you can talk even about nothing and still make it interesting. Guys, I found out something so interesting. When I opened my iPhone and then I realized I didn't even open my iPhone, it was still black. Whoa, it was crazy. And then I realized we have to tap so it turns on. I did not know that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, I'm very good with this, but the point I'm trying to make is sometimes it's not the value that you try to give, it's more the presentation. So 
I wouldn't give you now advice to read a book on storytelling, which obviously helps to understand story. Like if you tell stories and the arc and the structure of stories. So if you go more and more into filmmaking and trying to tell stories, then obviously get your hands on every book that you can get about storytelling. There is one amazing book. I forgot his name, but I think it's called The Anatomy of Story, which is very deep inside. So I don't think that you need that for that. What I would suggest more rather a practical approach is, you know, this is where TikTok, Instagram Reels, and even stories come handy. Give yourself a challenge and just tell a story every day about something. Hey guys, today I found this website, 30 seconds, and just repeat this and do this for 90 days. You will see that you probably will improve more than reading a book on story because you just practice this, especially with stuff like with the renewable, renewable energy. So when I, for example, did my my very first time the daily vlogging thing. I became even better in telling jokes because of the limitation of just creating a video every day. So when you do this every day, you, you lose the fear because that's the next part. I could make a complete video about this. The main reason why you maybe act like you act right now is because of your mindset and your fears. Besides like training, practice and doing this kind of things and reading all about story and rhetoric is also learning to overcome your fears. And for example, what I can do is now I will put a link in the description um, in the Course Creator Pro community where I am right now. Um, there's all cool guys in it, but one guy, he made a course about fearless on camera. And I just looked at the course to give him a re review and everything, right? But he will come out with this course. I'm not sure if it's already done, but if it's out, I will put a link in the description, which covers that topic. Fearless on camera, which is all mindset, all the things, how to tell stories or how to do this, right? So I think this will be very, very helpful. Last question. How can I do black and white in DaVinci Resolve very fast? That's actually very simple. We just delete all of this and we bring in a clip. We are here, we go to the color page and the <laughs> very easiest way is just to in incre uh, decrease the saturation. So you go in here and see it decreases to zero and you have black and white. It's that simple. If you want to make it a little bit more pop, I would do a second note. So, and now you can actually go to the first note and you can isolate, let's say I go here to the whopper and click on my color on the screen for the jacket. And now I can use those points for the, for the jacket and change it, make the color more black or even more brighter. Can do the same for the sky and try to change the sky here. So you can play around with the black and whites by the, changing the colors a bit and to make the image even more pop. So I hope you like this new format. Every Friday I will answer your questions. So keep on asking new questions under this video. So next week I can answer those questions. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, ding on ding on the bam bang gong and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, bye.